hit Sun going through Frieza's bodyguard, it would be the exact same scene from Dragon Ball Super where you see Hit going through all those henchmen for that one target he had in Universe 6. He would just be running right through them. They wouldn't even see it coming. Prepare yourself, Dan Saiyan. Smash that like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications that way you never miss a video. Today I am very fortunate to be reviewing Ashan Anime Arts first ever Dragon Ball fan manga. Yesterday I did part one, so if you did miss that, I'm gonna have a link to it in the description below and the top comment because today we are jumping into part two. But if you'd like to stay tuned for any updates on this Dragon Ball fan manga, Dragon Ball Super Sarani, I'm gonna have a link to Ashan's Twitter account. That way you guys can go ahead and follow him. Stay tuned for any updates for this fan manga. Last we left off, we were introduced to Universe 14's God of Destruction and Angel, and that is Sira and Noir. Now, these two were erased prior to the events of Dragon Ball Super, but 17's Wish brought every single universe that had ever existed, it brought them back. So, they got brought back as well, and here we have a brand new God of Destruction, and Universe 9's God of Destruction is trying to get a favor from Sira asking for her protege, his son, Kane. That way, Kane can go and assassinate Frieza. But Sira won't give up Kane without a price, and she wants to know exactly what he's willing to offer to get Kane's services. And Universe 9 is willing to give up the Lashino Mizu. This object contains some broken ass water. This water not only heals any injury and sickness, but it also has the ability to bring life to barren lands, like a barren planet. And it's an extremely rare item that is very precious to the gods of destruction. So the fact that Universe 9 is giving it up shows exactly how desperate they are to get rid of Frieza, who is gunning for the job of destroyer of Universe 9. But now we know a little bit more information and lore for the God of Destruction title because if a God of Destruction is removed from their position, the punishment for that is worse than being erased. And since Sira knows what it's like to be erased since her universe was erased, she would have first-hand account exactly what the difference would be compared to the punishment of failing to do your job as a destroyer, which I would think if the punishment is really worse than just becoming nothing and being killed off and being wiped out of existence, if the punishment is worse than that, then I don't see why Beerus, Champa, or any of these God of Destruction don't actively try to make their universe ranking higher. But it could also be that the Grand Priest and the Omni King haven't really been on top of them that often, trying to make them the better Gods of Destruction of their universe. So that could be exactly what is going on here, that they have been very hands-on, and they're finally becoming more hands-on. So Sira agrees to help out Universe 9 so that way they don't lose their job and so they take hold of this precious item and send Kane to deal with Frieza that way Universe 9 can continue running business as usual and I want to take a moment here to look at the designs of these two new characters. So the angel really just looks like any other angel. Really, there isn't any defining aspect to him. It looks very similar to his brothers and sisters, but the God of Destruction is completely unique. Not only is she gorgeous, but she's got a great fashion sense. And even the haircut that she has is a very punk rock haircut that looks like half of her hair is dyed. So she is definitely more of a sporty God of Destruction, and I definitely enjoy her design. Now we find Finally get to see Kane, son of Hit, and he is ready to accept the job. Now, everything that I said about the God of Destruction, Sira, and all the praise and love that I gave her, I really don't have it for Kane. Now, Kane looks very similar to Hit. Obviously, he had a different mother because 
this is not like pure hit race this is definitely mixed the hair is different there are different aspects to this character's design that shows that not only is this character mixed race mixed species but he's not a very good assassin now this character is covered in scars as opposed to hit who is not covered in any scars and hit does have the time skip so that makes him harder to hit and the time skip could be more of a technique than something that is on the species although I do think that this character is going to have the time skip but it seems like he's been hit way more times and actually cut and damaged way more times than hit has because he's got plenty of scars and even his shirt has a rip right there where it looks like he was maybe stabbed right through the abdomen now the reason that I'm not 100% for this design is the bottom tier so everything from the top looks great love the shirt I love the way that he looks almost exactly like hit but with some really cool differences specifically the hair but when you get to the lower half not only does he have like these short shorts these tight bicycle dad jeans He's got like a little flap of God of Destruction, which I understand because he is the trainee of the God of Destruction. But his shoes look very similar to the shoes of the Frieza army and the Saiyan army. It just feels like he's just a collaboration of way too many ideas. Specifically on the lower half, I really am not digging this design. I'll be completely honest with you. So we jump to Whis's planet and Whis tells Goten and Trunks that they have to carry those giant boxes that were introduced in Dragon Ball Super where Goku and Vegeta were training with them. They got to carry those in their base form without going into Super Saiyan. And of course Piccolo has to do the exact same thing. But then Whis gets a little upset with Goku and tells him that this isn't a vacation planet. This isn't a training planet. He chose Goku and Vegeta very specifically to train but Goku brought more friends and family over to the planet to train and this is not really like a training getaway like not everybody can train on this planet although it seems like he's going to take these three in but he is very upset with Goku for the fact that he's just bringing people to the planet and having Whis train them when that's not the point. This is Beerus' planet. And Goku just passes everything off to Vegeta, which is funny. Vegeta's like, what the hell? Don't blame me. And it was like Goku's idea, so I don't know why he did that. But speaking of Vegeta, Whis says that Vegeta has actually been on the planet regularly. He has been training regularly the last year compared to Goku who has been slacking off and hasn't really been training that much which is kind of weird to see Goku not training uh, you know farming and just relaxing with the family or whatever so he has been hanging out with Chi Chi I guess and the family but he has been neglecting not only his training but his master Whis and that means that Vegeta has jumped a level ahead of him. With that being said Goku challenges Vegeta to spar and as they're doing that, Whis tells Piccolo that since he has no new transformation, then he has to keep on his weighted clothing and can't take it off during this training exercise. Meanwhile, Goten and Trunks are really having a hard time lifting this, and so is Piccolo. But Goku and Vegeta square up because it's time to see them in action. Whis tells them to make sure the sparring match is relatively quick because Beerus is in the middle of his nap so they end up powering up while Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo end up just watching by the sidelines which usually ends up happening and Piccolo is questioning why he's even there seeing as how all these Saiyans are on a completely different level than him but I like the fact that Piccolo's here because it means that he's trying to get on the same level as them which I am 100% a fan for. And this is where we see what the difference is between Vegeta and Goku. Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, which just looks like Super Saiyan Blue, specifically the way we see him in the manga. And then we see Vegeta, and Vegeta is true Super Saiyan Blue, which he looks very much the same, except a little bit slender, and there are sparkles, more sparkles in his aura than Goku's. Goku quickly notices that Vegeta Super Saiyan Blue looks a lot different than the one that he has and Vegeta explains that while Goku was busy farming and relaxing and, and not really training, Vegeta has been training and he's gotten a new state that is called True Super Saiyan Blue. 
Weiss explains this form as, this is what I was speaking about earlier, Goku. Vegeta has found the true potential of Super Saiyan Blue during his training. This form is more powerful than the current Super Saiyan Blue you are using, and above that, it also is able to maintain a long period without it draining your stamina. Do you see that Vegeta-san looks a lot younger, which is reminiscent of when you turn Super Saiyan God, which I think that's my favorite part about this is that they are combining the youthful skinny look, the very lean look of Super Saiyan God and putting it into Super Saiyan Blue which I think should have been like a no brainer because that was like the most unique part about Super Saiyan God and my favorite part that it physically made them look different as opposed to Super Saiyan Blue which it did not. And this seems like a combination of what happened in the manga and the anime. It looks like a combination of when Goku was fighting Zamazu and he was keeping the Super Saiyan Blue key inside his body to make himself stronger. It seems like that is part of it. And the other part is Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, which is the transformation that Vegeta got in the anime that really made him very, very bulky. And as you're gonna see here in a second, Vegeta basically used the exact same method that Goku used during the Cell Saga to master Super Saiyan. He used the same thing. So like this is like the next step from Super Saiyan Blue Evolution and I'm 100% on board with this. Because Vegeta basically stayed in blue, he stayed extremely calm while he was asleep, awake, everything that he did. He trained for a year to do it and now he's got this brand new transformation that is far stronger than the one that Goku's using and Goku seems to be using a more raw form while Vegeta is using a more refined form of blue. But Goku's over the explanation, he attacks Vegeta head on and as he attacks Vegeta, Vegeta smiles as he easily dodges and blocks and punches at Goku where Goku barely blocks it and you can just tell the difference in power from their facial expressions. And Vegeta attacks Goku, punching him in the face and forcing Goku back. And before Goku has a moment to land, Vegeta pops up right behind him and knocks him back. Vegeta's speed and strength is far surpassed what Goku can do in Super Saiyan Blue. And with this, Vegeta finally defeats Goku because he is on a completely different level than Goku's Blue because Goku has slacked off and Vegeta has not, which is a great continuation to Vegeta's arc of wanting to train throughout Dragon Ball Super with the gods, which I 100% enjoy. So I definitely like the way this is going. It seems very natural and I am enjoying this part of the manga. And the consensus is that if Goku were to train the same way as Vegeta, for as long as Vegeta did, then Goku would be on the same playing field as Vegeta right now. And that's what Whis tells him. Whis says that Goku's new training is to basically achieve this new form. Seeing as how he cannot go into Ultra Instinct at will yet, he will have to train Blue the way that Vegeta trained Blue. And so now Goku is struggling to catch up to Vegeta. And now we are at the end of the chapter where we see Frieza's ship and a shadowy figure behind him and Frieza says, For you to pass all my guards undetected means that you're not here to talk. And Kane says, You're right, I'm not here to talk. I'm here to kill you. And that is the end of this chapter. And Kane may grow on me. Um, again, his design is not something that I enjoy right now. To the fullest extent that I enjoy the rest of the designs, especially that God of Destruction, but I can feel like he's probably going to, you know, grow a little bit on me as he fights Frieza in the next chapter, and I cannot wait for that chapter to come out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for all your support, and if you made it to this point in the video, you are now part of the hashtag end of video squad. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Make sure to drop your comment with that hashtag for a chance to be featured in my next video. Today, I'm going to be responding to Yorozuya Gin Chan. I just noticed that Kakarot only dies by the hand of green people, Piccolo, Cell, and official Ningen Screamer. Not sure who the last one is, but I'm trying to think. Hit actually ended up killing Goku, and then Goku resuscitated himself after that. Now, that may have been not canon, that may have been filler, but that's like one of the best filler episodes in all of Dragon Ball Super, and one of the best episodes in Dragon Ball Super, so I don't see your logic 100% there, but I think I'm missing somebody, actually, if I really look into it. I think there's somebody else that killed Goku. 
that I'm not thinking of right now, but I think you're right. Only green people besides Hit have killed Goku. Thank you so much for your comment. This is going to be Blackscape signing off. Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content.